Hey guys, you're listening to Winging It with Holly. In this podcast series, I'll be sharing the fun and interesting things I've learned about birds since I started really noticing them five years ago. I'm no expert though, so along the way I'll be picking the brains of my knowledgeable birdie friends, the human ones that is, so we can learn and wing it together. You can see birds anywhere, in a city or the countryside, watching from a balcony or your local park, and I'm hoping these short episodes will help you notice and learn more about our feathered friends, especially if you have never taken the time to get to know them before. The nocturnal nightjar is one of our most fascinating birds, known for its strange wide mouth, distinctive churring call, and a mythical ability to steal milk from goats. So in this episode, my friend Jack and I go to Ashdown Forest at night time in the hope of seeing and hearing this mysterious bird. Let's go, take two. Take two. <laughs> take two. <laughs> uh, right, so... And action. Action. Let's get cracking. <laughs> I feel like this is going to be one of those giggly ones, and I don't know why. It, it, if it is... That if it is, it is. It's um, night time. <laughs> night time is when we're all giggly. All right, uh, let's talk night jars. Um, so night jars are just a really incredible bird. They look amazing and they sound amazing. And as soon as I knew I wanted to do this podcast, I I knew I wanted to do an episode on night jars specifically because they do this incredible sound which I'm hoping to capture today so I also uh, it's important that we do this recording now because night jars are migratory birds which I'm sure my friend Jack will tell us about later um, but basically they are only around for another couple of months so we're recording this in July and uh, they'll be here until about August sorry <laughs> <laughs> the intro's been distracted by a potential night jar. Okay, this is what it's probably going to be like. Every time we might hear them, we're just going to have to stop and freeze and try and get a recording. But that's how important this recording is. So I've brought Jack out with me to Ashdown Forest in East Sussex. Um, so Jack, hello. Hello. <laughs> um, I've had you on the podcast before. Uh, you've very kindly spoken to me about starlings. What else? Uh, you may have heard my voice on... On, uh, tits. tits, shags and boobies. Uh, we've also got some others in the pipeline because, Jack, you have some specialist areas in your work, don't you? So one of the reasons I've got you for this podcast is because you're a bit of a heathland specialist. Is that fair to say? No, I never heard of him before. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. I, I have, uh, I have in my in my line of work, I have a speciality habitat which is uh, which is lowland heathland. Exactly, and that. So yeah, Ashdown Forest. That's where we're here today, looking for night jars. Hopefully, going to hear them uh, because they live in heathland. Etc. Yes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They um, they uh, they nest around uh, lowland heathland sites. Um, also as well um, around like kind of conifer plantations, recently felled sort of areas like woodland edge. Um, and also as well, they you do have um, breeding nightjar up in uh, like kind of moorland areas as well. But um, there's some really good populations of them um, down here in like the lowland heathlands of um, of southern England. And this episode is going out, uh, I think, <laughs> a week before Heath Week, which is the 25th to the 31st of July. Jack, what on earth is Heath Week about? Well, Heath Week is a fantastic celebration of all things uh, heathy, really. Um, heathy. So, yes, heathy. Everything's that, everything that is heathy. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, it's basically a um, a week where there's a series of events in different places. So you know whether that be like kind of um, around kind of this area or down on some of the coastal heaths, the Dorset, or in the Thames Basin heaths, Wilton heaths. You know, there's loads of stuff going on, uh, trying to get people to like sort of you know find out more about heathlands, about species like nightjar, um, you know, educate people, and um, and then just yeah, just have a bit of fun really. Oh, a bit of fun on the heath, <laughs> which is what we're doing now, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're having a good time. So let's talk night jars because they're just really, really cool birds. What? Uh, so if I were to say, what is? How would you describe a night jar? You know, what kind of bird is it, and what does it look like? Go. 
So uh, <laughs> nightjar is a bit on the spot there. Uh, so nightjar are a um, well, they're a migratory bird, um, and uh, they they come from like kind of the 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 well the nightjar, but also the like the frog mouth family. So they're these really strange, like kind of weird looking birds. They've got these massive gapes of the of the mouth, um, and uh, well, that's where the, the you know the name frog mouth comes from because they've got these like kind of big like sort of almost cartoonish um, like kind of triangular looking mouths that they sort of like open up especially like kind of you know the um the the, the you know the young like kind of when they're you know they wanted to be fed and that sort of thing they've got these massive like yeah cartoonish style mouths um they look really really funny they've got these big like kind of beady black eyes um they've also got like the teeniest little beaks and they've got like these bristly whisker things there yeah yeah so yeah so they've got the tiny little beaks um and um and and then like kind of yeah surrounded by that like where they've got the big mouth they've got these like kind of bristly bits which help them um to basically sort of um pick up some some of the you know their their prey um the, you know the food that they go for which is um essentially um moss and like kind of you know yeah so moss that are flying around on the heathlands um you know at at the the most active times which is generally you know around um, dawn and dusk um so that's when you get the greatest levels of nightjar activity which is why we are here tonight and it's what night 10 o'clock or something or yeah it's nine. like uh it's quarter to 10 and we have passed sunset <laughs> um so the sun is very much on, on its way so um down we are dedicated you know coming out oh hang on there's a potential over here yeah so we're just, yeah, we're just walking over to see, like, kind of running commentary because this is a podcast, um, so you can't see what's going on. All right, hang on, let's just. We'll come back to that. Um, I so speaking of the very distinct look, distinctive look. Um, at this point, despite the fact that this obviously is an audio audio channel, I would really encourage you to just Google image what um, <laughs> what a nightjar looks like. It's even better Google image nightjar mouth, and you get the the real sense of how unique what. How, how unique looking this bird is it's it's quite extraordinary and like when you <laughs> with its mouth open it doesn't even really look like a bird does it like it's so the beak is just so strange where they're really well um uh like kind of they're really well camouflaged with their um you know with their plumage and um so Which they've got like this very, a, it's very it's like cryptic a, it's uh, like a mottled it's like a brown and it's a mix yeah. of brown yeah so like kind of i mean um I, yeah i don't know whether we'll, we'll cover it in a bit but um but just to say so they they basically have this cryptic color because um they're inactive during the day um so they'll be like sort of you know nestled down potentially at, at a nest site which is normally like kind of you know around areas of like sort of bare ground um with like kind of you know little bits of like kind of sticks and twigs like kind of and and, and dead wood like kind of here and there and 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 they're a, so they're a ground nesting bird and mm. so obviously to to try and detract um predators and so they can't be seen they have this like sort of you know color to them but then when they yeah when they open their mouths they've got this like a bright like kind of like pink like kind of mouth yeah, like yeah. so it's, yeah, it's, it's very... always fleshy do you know what it's... yeah 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 it looks yeah <laughs> it does look a bit weird compared so... to the, sort of the rest of its appearance but also compared to like the standard idea of what a beak and a, a bird kind of looks like that there's just something about the mouth which i just, just think is quite um, extraordinary. <laughs> um, so uh, they also kind of well, I read that their shape is similar to kestrels and cuckoos. Does that sound right to you? I mean, I guess they've got long tails, haven't they? Yeah, they're, I mean, they are. They're a similar size, and like kind of, I can I can see that, um, especially with like sort of the the shape of the wings of like a kestrel and um, and the sort of the the profile of of a, of a cuckoo where they both have that sort of like kind of quite deep lying sort of chest and um, and they sit quite kind of close to the you know um they, they they're not they're not upright if you get what i yeah, mean like exactly. so i think there's the, yeah there are definitely similarities between mm -hmm. between them um, between those birds yeah okay so let's talk about uh well the reason that we're here tonight is to try and capture their sound so again they also have a very unique sound that they make which i think could be best described as like a churring so oh do you do you have a uh, can you do us an example of, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come on what's your um, um yeah give us a chur your best night jar chur so let me just wet, wet the wet wind. Wind. <laughs> um, it's sort of like a <laughs> oh god <laughs> Um, yeah, it's it, it's sort of. I always think it sounds a little bit like a cricket, um, like kind of going like 
<laughs> going consistent no and then it kind of comes up so there's that kind of so it goes quite low it's that brrr, and then it comes up to a brrr, brrr, mm-hmm. like that oh, that was so much better that, that time was, that we, could, we could probably cut that and, and put in the, just the just the best one uh, no no i think we should get it all in there um yes yeah, and it's kind of i don't know why but um I've also heard people sort of describe it as sounding a little bit like a frog, but I, now I'm I'm not so sure anymore. But I guess maybe it's just the sort of, yeah, the like low rumbly kind of repetitive sort of, yeah, kind of thing. But um, hopefully we'll get it today and I can, you know, put it in here. Um, oh, do you know why they do this? Why they chur like that? Well, so um, essentially churring is like kind of a, a process of um, of like kind of, you know, um, finding a territory, finding a mate. Um, so it's all these sort of, you know, how songbirds interact and they create these sounds. Um, night jars do, do do this as well and they create this uh, this churring sound. Um, and oh, we've, we might potentially have a, uh, so we can hold that thought just for a second <laughs> because we might potentially have a, a night jar in flight maybe with some flapping. We can see one. It's just coming across now. Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh there's a second one. Yeah, look, look, it's just here. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so we've literally got two that have just flown over right in front of us. And they were perched over there. They were. They. It looks. It looks like. So there's a. There's a little area where you've got all this kind of gorse. It's quite built up. This gorse here, and then there, it looks like there's a little pocket in there, which is like sort of low, low lying. So that might be, you know, a um, a nest site that they've got there because um, they didn't start off with any churring at all. So it looks like that is a pair. Well, that's really special to see isn't it like literally they are flying over us and i don't i've never seen one this close i know yeah it's it's um it's a really lovely sight for seeing them just sort of like come because they just come straight over the path um and they just sort of flying to and from you've got these ni- nice like kind of areas of you know um quite like kind of bare ground but then you've got this this is woodland right next to us um which they'll spend a lot of their time sort of feeding around because they love that that sort of woodland edge area and um, where they're picking off all of the um all of the uh the moths um in there and um and then yeah it's, it's not <laughs> it's literally over our heads right now yeah. i can hear some more churring in that direction do you mind if we if we continue the chat over there yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, let's go have a little look. Just there's, um, there's a, we've got a consistent chur happening, even though this lovely one is giving us quite a <laughs> display above. Yeah. Um, I can actually, do you know what? Um, do you know what, like, kind of just seeing um, it flying like this and just having that conversation that you're saying about um, the cuckoo and the kestrel yeah. thing, it really, <laughs> it yeah, does, I've, never, it. I've never thought about it that way, but now that I look <laughs> at it, especially when it sort of, it does a little bit of a hover at times, and, and that does, it really does look like a kestrel. <laughs> so, I know you just told us, but basically, so the, the churring that we can hear right now, it, is that bird just, it's just sat somewhere in its nest, or, or not even its, its nest, it's just, it's not doing anything, it's just, just churring. Yeah, so it's it will be like kind of you know it will be, it'll be perched and, and and basically making this noise, which will sig- signify either that it's trying to find a mate. Um, obviously, we're quite late in yeah. the season. Yeah, I was going to say, isn't that a bit? Isn't it a bit late now to be looking for a? Well, I mean, it y- yes, um, it is. I mean, in terms of like kind of the the breeding season, um, I mean, night jars will start pretty early on, um, like kind of you know when they'll they'll come back over around May time. Um, around the start of May, and um, and then they'll they'll swiftly try and find um, 
a uh, you know a a, a suitor um, and um, and then attempt nesting like kind of you know around getting into like sort of you know um, like kind of like Juneish time um, like kind of potentially I mean potentially late May if they get get onto it quickly um, but then uh, then yeah then they'll, um, they'll 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 basically lay uh, with night jars it's always two eggs um, that they lay in their nest um, and uh, and they normally have one or two broods um, it depends on the success of the first one and how early they get the first one in and whether or not they're going to attempt to have a second um, so yeah so kind of around so they could still be um, like kind of you know in the process like kind of with that and, and kind of you know getting that that second brood like sort of going and then they might end up leaving late who knows um you know there's there's i mean down here in sussex you know they've um they've generally recorded like kind of the last night jars around you know even in september time like late september um i think historical records have gone back even to november for, for night job but we've not had that for years okay um it's interesting you say that about the nests. So, and also, you know, uh, um, earlier today I asked you if you watched this year's Spring Watch. So, I'm not sure if at the time that this episode goes out, it will still be available on iPlayer. But if it is, you should watch episodes 11 and 12 because basically they've got a nest cam on a night jar, and the night and she has there's two. She's got two eggs. They both hatch. One of them unfortunately doesn't survive, but the other one they actually get footage of this team teeny tiny little night jar and it is the sweetest thing and literally it's all Chris Packham can talk about is he's obsessed with the night jar it's actually really really lovely and so I would recommend you Jack you go and watch it as well but anyone listening if you can still get to episodes 11 and 12 of um, Spring Watch it's just very sweet and also will give you a really good idea of of, of what they look like <laughs> um, but yeah so that's the yeah that's the sounds that's the incredible sounds that they make um I also wanted to talk to you about the folklore around Nightjar um, because they've uh, <laughs> they've had a slight, a, quite a bad rep. Um, well, I don't know when they were first discovered, but according to folklore, they used to be known as goat suckers. So, talk to me. Why why were they called goat suckers? <laughs> Well, I mean, to be honest, I'm not really 100% sure as to why they called them goat suckers, but they just, they used to, oh, we've got a little bat here, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they they basically used to think that um, the uh, the night jar I think because of their like sort of you know mysterious behaviour and like kind of the fact that you know they're, they're found you know around like kind of their nocturnal and crep crepuscular so like kind of dawn dusk mm -hmm. time like kind of you know the, it, that's that eeriness to it and I think with with you know with things like birds and all sorts you know and, and bats for example as well like kind of along with that comes all this sort of like kind of you know mythology and lore and 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 and, and I think they've just sort of got a bit tied up with that and um and so they just used to think that they used to like kind of um suck on 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 goats essentially um which is why they get their um uh, their latin name uh little latin name um check putting in there like like i always <laughs> like to do um so they're called caprimulgus europea um which basically european um for the um uh, for the last bit but then the caprimulgus means uh means goat sucker or uh, yeah like goat milker basically capri like capri yeah. um like um capricorn yeah. <laughs> so i so i read um i did do a little bit of research before i asked you that question and <laughs> so it's like on top of the fact that they yeah they're mostly they're nocturnal so they do a lot of their sort of they're very active at night and therefore people don't really tend to see what they're up to in the daytime it was also largely that because of the insects that hover around livestock literally like mm. um farmland animals they were occasionally seen around animals like goats and so people believe that also because of the shape the strange shapes of their mouths which <laughs> i guess in a way are perfect for suckling that that the, they were thought to be um to literally suckle on goats udders um but it was a bad thing because they people apparently obviously again this is the this is definitely not true but uh, <laughs> the goats would uh, according to folklore not produce milk after they'd been suckled by a goat sucker night jar mm. so it was so basically they were just yeah it, they were even persecuted for it like they people believed that you know they were bad to be they didn't want them around their livestock because but the whole 
this is none of this is true. No, <laughs> so none no, of this no. is true. They just they they were eating the insects. Actually, that's what they were doing. Yeah, yeah, and and actually, it, just as you were saying that, it just like kind of reminded me. There's been some like kind of um, research recently over in Thetford Forest. So that's over like kind of um, uh, East Anglia way, like kind of you know between um, you know around like Norfolk Suffolk way, um, and uh, and they did they did a study looking at like kind of you know um, where nightjar were commonly feeding, and sometimes they were feeding over woodland, sometimes in in like kind of you know heathy like grassy heath areas but also as well like kind of over um areas of like kind of farmland and um and uh and like kind of you know grazing grazing areas like kind of they they're making really really frequent trips to those areas so they are an important food source for um for night jars to, to pick up you know things like moths around in in those sort of grazing areas with livestock mm. So one of the other things I just wanted to pick up on in terms of their behaviour is that they are ground nesting birds, which obviously can sometimes bring a lot of risks and concerns of disturbance. But also I've uh, I, I've learnt that they the females will they'll feign injury or something that. Yeah, so they um so when they you know they sense uh, uh danger um and they want to sort of do, you know uh detract the attention away from like kind of you know their nest site um what what the um the the you know what they'll do is they'll they'll sort of like kind of you know um essentially like kind of drop their wing as if um as if like kind of they're injured to try and sort of lure predators away from the nest and then um and then yeah and and it, and, it, and it works you know it's a successful way of like kind of trying to get get predators away and um you know obviously it doesn't always work but uh, but it's a really interesting and good strategy and um i think there are you know there are other, other examples of like kind of similar things with that sort of dropped wing thing but it's really clever mm. really, really clever. no that is that is really clever so you know we've been banging on about how amazing these birds are <laughs> how amazing they look uh, how amazing they sound so if i don't know if any listeners wanted to go out and do what we're doing right now and you know go and find some uh to to hear this extraordinary sound do you have do you do you recommend any places or certain types of habitat to look for where people could hear them see them yeah i mean like kind of you know there's the sites that you know the, the around where where we live anyway down down in the south of england there's some really good sites obviously we're here in the ashdown forest and, and you know they've got a healthy population of night jars the wilden heaths as well so that kind of comes across sussex surrey um area and then you've got um and also like kind of a little bit of hampshire in there as well and um, thames basin heaths is just next to that just a little bit north um again like surrey um hampshire berkshire you've got the new forest as well massive area um like kind of you know uh, and that's that's really good for night jar you've also got um around like kind of in dorset you've got the dorset heath so there's some sort of you know really nice coastal heath um you've got like kind of rspb arm which is a good site for night jar um but then also as well over on the suffolk way you've got um sherwood forest as well so you could get you go see some night jar around learn a little bit about robin hood you know and um, there's loads of like yeah loads of really really interesting places and and sorry just to say on that as well like kind of you know because i just mentioned somewhere like sherwood forest with like robin hood there's like kind of it's just so so interesting to sort of be like kind of you know to see like kind of you know birds like nightjar really really like fascinating species on like kind of heath and sites and there's all there's that thing about heathens there's just a really nice mix of like kind of um like kind of you know the, the wildlife but then also like the culture and history like kind of so like i say you've got robin hood you've got uh, winnie the pooh down here in ashdown forest you've got all sorts of sort of more modern um bits of like kind of culture in um, like the thames basin heath for example a lot of films get um get done there so keep your eyes peeled for heathlands um in like things <laughs> is like this Marvel. you plugging heath yeah, again yeah. for it is heath week guys from the 25th to the 31st of july uh, holly told me that um, we're talking about night jars today but I've sort of tried to um, to get as much heathland in there as well because we need to talk about heaths as well because they're amazing places. Very sneaky um, no it's all very good and very interesting so thank you. Thank you for uh, sharing all of that with us today Jack Oh yeah and I uh, just wanted to add as well um, so obviously it's a fantastic experience getting out and seeing species like night jars um, and uh, I, I know we kind of covered it a little bit there they are, um, they are ground nesting birds so they do you have um, sensitivities and, and kind of you know around this time of year in the summer when they're breeding um, their nests are susceptible to both predators but also as well to human disturbance as well so we do we do ask that people do keep to paths um, and like sort of you know maintain their distance
moments um and uh, and just enjoy enjoy the spectacle like kind of from those parts and, and kind of you know respecting nature and um and yeah i mean what a sight it will be when you do see it so um so yeah just something to bear in mind um and uh happy heathing <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that jack so all i'm gonna say now well yeah if you um and thanks for your recommendations of where to where to see and hear them it's a real treat when you do so um you know if yeah give it a go um your homework for today is everybody is to google image um a potu or is it a potu a potu (laughs) they are just because they are from the same family of frog mouse and you know it's the kind of thing that will give you nightmares but it's just just do it you won't you won't regret it maybe you will (laughs) (laughs) and also by the way we don't get them here but anyway yeah Uh, thanks jack Thanks very much for having me. <laughs> it's um, been a blast. It's been a blast. And, uh, well, we're hopefully going to have you on soon to talk about Swift, aren't we? Yes, yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have any birdie questions you'd like me to explore in this podcast, you can get in touch via my Instagram, at Holly.